All right, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our March uh, 20th uh, school board meeting. And um, I'm gonna ask for our um, board secretary to do the roll call, please. Director Breland. Here. Director Glover Brown. Here. Director Leonard. Here. Director Liggins. Director Supler. Here. Director Thompson. Here. Director Wilkes. Present. Vice President Orr. Here. President Kennedy. Here. You. Um, next up on our agenda, would you please um, stand for a moment of silence and then um, the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, everyone. Um, next up on the agenda is the approval of our February 21st minutes. We have um, a motion to accept minutes as presented. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Next up is our superintendent's report. I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Barry. Good evening, directors, um, family, friends. Um, welcome to our March board meeting. Today, we are doing something a little bit different and a little bit out of order from our norm. We have some wonderful young ladies that we want to recognize. So I am going to turn um, the program over at this point to Director Diane Glover Brown and Dr. Fitch so they can um, get our recognition underway. Good evening, everyone. It is with extreme pleasure and honor that we celebrate uh, something that hasn't happened in 28 years. 28 years. 28 years. Some of these people, I know these girls weren't born, but uh, it, it's it's been a long time. And it's a long, yeah, you know, that's funny, but you know, it's been a long time. But at the end of the day, we have to celebrate um, something special that's going on. Um, this this coach came. Um, you might know him. I, I know you, might, you might know him. He, he came up and you know, he had a he had a vision, he had a plan, and he worked even with um, some some girls that I know very well and helped them mature and grow. And he had a vision and it continued to grow and develop and develop. And now uh, we are here um, celebrating something very, very special and looking for it to continue. So. Miss Brown, would you like to introduce him? I most certainly would like to introduce him. He's older than 28 years old, but he <laughs> just a little bit. I'm only a little bit older than 28 myself. So, but I just wanted to, uh, along with Dr. Fitch and Dr. Berry, just share the the recognition with um, Kevin, my nephew Kevin, and the Lady Bearcats because they have done a su superb job this year. It has been 28 years. It's been 28 years since our Lady Bearcats have gotten this far with the uh, finals. So just wanted to celebrate them. And at this time, if, if uh, Coach Kevin Glover can come up, I'd like to present him with the certificate. Okay. And we'll have the rest of your staff come up. Uh, Coach Larry Fell. Coach Sean Pot. Oh, 
and Sherry Bernstein. Yeah. Okay. It's an honor to be in the show. Okay. Okay. I'm getting in the picture. Right. I'm going to take many pictures. One, two, three. <laughs> on the book, All right. So we'll turn it over. Coach Glover, he wants to introduce some special guys. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, when he calls your name, if you could stay up here so we can get a picture of all of you together, we'd appreciate it. Uh, first thing I do want to say before I call these young ladies up, I do want to thank uh, everyone here at the school board for not only organizing this, but uh, the support that you guys showed this year, uh, seeing you guys out at the games, uh, supporting the girls. Uh, it's been it's been a long journey, but uh, I'm super, super, super proud of these girls, and I thank you all for that support. Uh, first is Zanaya Walker. Ziggy Walker. Next up is Sierra Gibbs. Next, we have Ashia Smith. Next, we have Zakira McGee. You do shy now. Oh man, next we have Isaiah Kirkland. <laughs> Samira Matthews. Samira. Honesty Smith. And last, who's in tennis tonight? We are missing three players. We can make it. Uh, Jada Price. We're going to get one of the ladies, then coaches will come up next. Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah, yo, man. One, two, three. There you go. For the book. <laughs> All right. Now, coach. Your girl. Okay. Look at your family. Smile. Smile. There you go. All right. Shout out. I'll get the guy. I'll have to You're up there. Ready? Hey. Dr. Fitch, again, we can't say enough about um, our lady Bearcats, because you keep hearing about a uh, many time about our boys teams, but we definitely want to show our support for our lady Bearcats, um, because you guys continue to grow and do amazing things. And we are just so proud of you. Um, especially our seniors who are going on to college. Um, you you're paving the way and we want to, this is not just for you, but for everyone else, underclassmen and those seventh and eighth graders coming up to the high, that it can be done. It will be done. And you guys are trailblazers. So, uh, I just want to say to the Lady Bearcats, it was an honor coming to watch you all play. And one of the things that I liked was your tenacity. And one thing I'm going to say is that when you're on that court, you leave it all. Mm -hmm. Leave it all. And you did that. And sometimes I'll see you get discouraged and we yell at you from the stands. <laughs> get out of that. That already happened. 
Let that go. Move on to the next play. But I was very proud of you all. It was a pleasure traveling to see you, even though the last game we came to, we got lost to rough in the hills and got there in mid first quarter. But it was a pleasure watching you all play this year. And good luck to you seniors. Yeah. Yep. And also they were recognized for their sportsmanship. Yeah. So again, yes. not only did they win. And that's not only a testament to their coaches, but to also our parents and families. So again, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Um, President Kennedy. Can we um, have the ladies who are seniors and leaving us, would you please stand so that we can give you another applause? For and again, I'll echo the sentiments of Director Bre um, Freeland, that's right. Um, we are just so proud of, of the story that you all uh, wrote this year for yourselves. And maybe you didn't think that this was where you would end up in the beginning of that journey, but you all work as a team. Thank you to the families, because this doesn't happen without family support. And thank you to the coaches. We are proud of you for the work that you've done. And when you receive the reward for sportsmanship, that speaks a lot to the community um into the county so we are just so very proud of you and keep doing what you're doing the ladies who are going on carry that same pride with you wherever you go we wish you well and represent and be successful as we know that you are and thank you all for coming this evening so that we have an opportunity to publicly honor you for um the journey that you were on and um due to work schedules i wasn't able to be at any of the games but i followed you on social media and um, I saw that send off that um, you all received on the way to that to that last game. It was heartwarming. And um, when this community does something, um, you know, we always or should say shouldn't say always. We oftentimes don't get the um, positive credit that this community is due. But um, what you all did forced the community and this county to say. Um, look at those Bearcat ladies. So thank you all for what you did and we continue to wish you well. So I am going to just briefly um, go back to the fact that they received an award for sportsmanship. Any superintendent or administrator is always proud of every sport and every team. But to be able to say that your your young ladies were recognized and looked upon by the refs of the entire county for their sportsmanship is a testament of all the sore legs and sore arms, of all of the yelling and the suicides, of all of the trips to the nook on the weekends. I saw many of you up there. And, and for all of the hard work that you put in, you not only were winners on the court, but you were winners and role models to all of the other young ladies in the county for your sportsmanship. So we are so proud of you. We appreciate you. We wish you all the best. And we can't wait till next year to see what you do then, because now you've set the bar for us, right? So thank you all for coming. And thank you so much for all your hard work. And let us not forget, they have great a great grade point average as well. They're, right. they're not just students, athletes, they're students as well.
So next we are going to um, begin our school presentation, but before we do, I want to recognize a family. So I'm going to ask Mrs. Um, Kerner, Dr. Fitch to come up. Hi, good evening. Um, I, this is one of my favorite parts, um, being able to talk about my families and three amazing children. Um, in front of you, I have the Ingram family. Um, I have Mr. Ingram. Um, I also have my girl, Evie. Evie is in third grade. Kason is in fourth. And James, my birthday twin, is in eighth grade. Um, I have known this family, Mr. Ingram, I went back and double checked. I have known this family since James was in kindergarten. I met James my first year as an assistant principal. His first year of school was my first year in this, in, in this world. Um, I am so grateful for this family. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Ingram do a wonderful job of making sure that they hold us accountable. Um, they have great relationships with our staff. They will call, text, communicate with anybody to make sure that we are doing our best for their kids. Um, they also show up every time we need them. These are wonderful students, no issues, but anytime, every event, every moment, they are both there or one of them is there, we need to call and ask a question, they are there. Um, one of the, the things that I've really enjoyed watching them grow up um, and Mr. and Ms. Ingram working to give them responsibility and trust their students. Um, the other day, Mr. Ingram dropped off a phone to make sure that the three of them were able to walk home safely. So we're at that point where they're growing up and going out on their own. Um, I also am super proud of all three students. Um, Evie and Kaysen in our third grade have been able to participate in some of the amazing grants that you have brought to us. Um, so both of them participated in our dance opportunity. They've been dancing up a storm. Um, Evie really loves it. She was up in front dancing with those dance battles. Um, and James over here um, is one of our students that tested into our Algebra One classroom. Um, he is doing a wonderful job. He also was selected to participate in our York College partnership. So James has been able to go over to York College to see what that is about. So on behalf of Good and the School District of the City of York, I want to thank both of you for entrusting us with your children. And thank you for holding us accountable. I look forward to seeing where your kids go in the future. We look like we have something for you. Can you please come up here, please? Evie, Evie got the muscles. She, she <laughs> come on around. She has her leadership skills out today. This is yours. This is yours. Come on, guys. We want. Come on, Mr. Ingram. Ms. Ingram, you guys can talk. Do you mind if I? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I just like to say. Times and I want to speak for both of us. More times than not, the compliments we get as parents, that means to my children, the things they get about their their manners, their their mannerisms, the grades, the drive they have, that's just them. Um, for a parent, the base level you can do, the very least, the very minimal, is just to show up, be present, and to go a little further is to try. But these, as we go through the journey together, just they make me proud. So thank you for the recognition. But honestly, I want to give it back to them. Come on, now, yeah, yeah, take it Come on, y'all get in. 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 Come on, y'all get in.
Thanks so much. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Hold on. Mr. and Mrs. Ingram. Before you guys go, it's so good to see um, a family together. Yes. Um, yes. See both man and woman in the picture. Um, I know many times we uh, cause the situations. Um, Things happen, life, lives. But again, sir, um, from a man to another man, I'm glad to see you doing what you need to do. And uh, we need more of that. So thank you. And Mr. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, hold on one second. Cause... <laughs> As, on behalf of the board, we just want to always um, thank our families for what you do and and what is so heartwarming is that um the praise and accolades that um your um, administrators were giving to you um you had the wherewithal to to give it to your children mm -hmm. and that doesn't normally um happen so it speaks to why um miss corner talked about the traits that they that they possess because it is what is demonstrated in front of them so we are so grateful for you allowing us to to um impart um anything to them in this in this um, world nowadays particularly their education and sharing your most prized possessions with us and we're grateful to you for um choosing the district <laughs> and, and to piggyback on what dr fitz said we have all our moms, but my hat's off to you, Dad. We don't see this a whole lot. My hat's off to you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Evie girl, my and her personality. <laughs> all right. So um for those that don't know, my name is Kelly Kerner. I am the proud principal over at Good. Um, and right on my side right here, I have my amazing partner, Miss Karen Smallwood. I also have an amazing group of support right here, um, right next to me. And I want to thank them for um, being here to help support us. Um, that's why they are here. They are a great support each and every day. So thank you to each and every one of you. Um, I'll introduce them at the end for you. So right before you, you have our purpose statement. Um, my favorite line in our purpose statement is bolded and underlined. Um, and that's the, the line I'm going to share with you. At good, we transcend boundaries, redefine possibilities, and together we craft a legacy of excellence. Our legacy is really where we stood on to start our year. Um, our teacher's opening day was all defined by how we write the legacy that we're living each and every day. On the table when you guys came in, there was a pen with our little tagline, good to great. We ask that you use that as you craft your legacy moving forward in our community and giving back to our children. We also have our district mission and vision up there and our core values of safety, vulnerability, and purpose. I know you know these numbers because they come to you frequently. Here is our enrollment numbers. Um, we are averaging, uh, maintaining about 640. Um, I feel like our doors are constantly opening. Uh, we average about three to four new students per week, and we're so excited to welcome them in. Um, we do have a little bit of pockets that are a little bit larger. Our fourth grade pocket and our seventh grade is a little bit larger. Those classes, when you walk into our building, look a little bit larger, but our teachers do a wonderful job of making sure that our students are getting access to everything that they need. Here is our demographic breakdown. Um, we have a wide range of um, opportunities for our students um, to see a variety of demographics within our building. Um, and we're trying to make sure that that happens with our staff, our volunteers, um, and those that are supporting our building. 
we have 155 students that are identified as ML or EL students. Uh, we have 149 students that are in our special ed program. We also have 26 students that are dual identified. We do have seven students that are in the process or have been identified as having GIEPs also. That is the other process that we're really working for, just acknowledging our students. We're really proud of that. Um, and the the as we move forward with our students who are being identified, that is out of the push from our teachers. Our teachers are seeing excellence within our classrooms and advocating for our students to be identified as well. This slide talks about our family and student supports. Um, so our student attendance is maintaining about that 89, 88, 89, 90 percent. Um, we've really done a lot to support our students, especially those that fall under that 24 percent of our chronic absenteeism. We have a successful check and connect program, which is helping our parents and our students work on their attendance. Uh, we also do a lot of home visits. Uh, we also are trying to get creative and identifying why our students are not coming to school. Um, and sometimes it's transportation and we work through that. Um, sometimes it's connections. Uh, we have a student that we have been working with who falls in this 159 um, and we were able to um, give him a bike to come back and forth to school. And um, this week was the first day all year that he arrived on time which we were very excited about because he is coming more and more now because he has relationships with our staff. He also has the bike. So that definitely helps. Um, if you move to next, the next one, this is our suspension count. We have a total right now of 15 suspensions. Um, that does not mean that we don't have students that have behaviors within our building, but we really use alternatives to suspension. Our teachers do a wonderful job of addressing behaviors within the classroom. Additionally, we use alternatives like community service within the building. Um, Ms. Smallwood does a wonderful job of, we haven't come up with a name for it yet, but it's something along the lines of like an in-school suspension. Um, but what she's doing when she's with them is she is working with them on their work. She's building character, helping them identify what the struggles are within their classrooms. And we're also looking at other opportunities like Pennsylvania counseling or communities and schools to help support that. One of the other pieces that we have brought in, and I know Dr. Barry was super excited about it, is our garden. Um, we have been utilizing our garden to help our students who are struggling with behaviors. Uh, we have a group of students that are working with Miss Liz, who is one of our monitors, um, and they are growing mushrooms right now. Um, and that is part of a project for students that have been struggling with behavior. It's something that they earned. Uh, we also are, are going through some of our compost bins, letting them get some of that aggression out um, and also letting them know that this goes right back into our, our, our earth and we're giving back to our, um, our area. Um, we are in number four. We talk about our expulsion count. We're at zero. Um, that has been pretty consistent for us. Um, and then the fifth one, um, some points of prides in regards to our family and community outreach. Um, our back to school night um, and our open house are always well attended. Uh, we do student of the month and we do awards um, assemblies each quarter. Um, our parent teacher conferences are well attended. Our teachers do a wonderful job of making sure we get parents here. Um, we have consistently, since I started at Good, done a community fundraiser. Um, AD Good gave up his life um, and is known for service and sacrifice, so we do a service project every year. Um, this year, we raised um, as a building and with the help of our um, faculty and staff across the district, over $2,000 for a family that lost their home in a fire. Um, and that is, that is just give us giving back. We do have students that go to York College, which is one of their favorites. I'm still waiting for my York College sweatshirt. I ask them every time, but the kids like it um, and they're really excited to connect back to YCOSP and understand that when they get to ninth grade and 11th grade, YCOSP is an option for them and they can't wait for that, that um, scholarship opportunity. We also send a parent newsletter home every month in English and in Spanish. We're working on Haitian Creole with the company um, to help parents understand opportunities to instruct them at home. Uh, our parent contacts are huge. Our discipline numbers are, um, are down, but you also see a huge increase in parent contacts from our teachers and for us. On my way here, I was talking to a parent about a positive. 
Um, we also were able to complete um, something that I have loved doing, um, a holiday gift for every single student in our building, which is one of my favorite days, um, and lots of other things. Saturday School, I know Ms. Small was going to talk a little bit about that later. Good evening, everyone. My name is Karen Smallwood, but I go by Deb. If you haven't heard Karen, you're like, who is that? I am I am Deborah. <laughs> um, I will discuss instruction. We're going to talk about um, the walkthroughs. We have completed 128 walkthroughs and 192 anecdotal notes. Um, I want to talk a little bit about our winter 24 UVA training. So we pivoted a little bit. Oh, sorry. We pivoted a little bit on how we're doing our walkthroughs based on the um, winter 24 UVA that we attended in January. So we are looking for specific things when we go in. Um, we're looking at lesson plans before we walk in. Are they... Um, on pace with the curriculum map. Then when we walk in, is the objective posted? Where's the objective at? Are they using the objective as they are delivering the lesson? So these are things that we are looking for and we learned that at UVA. So I appreciate being part of that. I've learned so much in the year and a half that I've been with the district. Um, observations, um, 40 in progress, 20 complete. We have 90% schedule. Our goal is to have them completed before PSSA testing. Okay, our PVAS, um, by looking at our building's growth indicator, we are doing well in math. Um, seventh grade still has some room for growth. Reading, there's growth, still some work um, to do. In science, we are Eighth grade science is killing it. And fourth grade, we still have some room for growth there. So if you look at our CDT, and I wanna really look at both of them together. Um, the CDT test um, assessment is a good indicator in math to where students are gonna perform on the PSSA. They are very close together. Same with science. ELA is a little different if we look at our um, PVAS data and we look at our CDT scores in 2023. It's kind of all over the place. So it's difficult for us to identify ELA as an indicator of how students are gonna do with their PSSA. And, and before you, we have our IXL data. Um, we have some some large numbers of our students answering questions. Our teachers do a wonderful job of making sure that students step into that arena. Um, we are one of the buildings that is using IXL in as many subject areas as possible. So we use it in ELA, math, science, and social studies. We have that available for our students in third grade and up. Um, teachers very frequently are saying, all right, the student needs to step into the arena. Um, there's been times where they'll call us and say, hey, can you sit with the student? They need to do 15 minutes, 20 minutes of IXL. It has become part of the routine that we utilize every day. Um, students know if we step into a classroom for a coverage that we can pull up their IXL. We like to send them little notes in IXL. Um, we're seeing our students make growth um, and hitting that those 30 questions targets. You're going to see lots of um, of arrows across the board. We see pockets of time where our students dip down a little bit around the holidays, especially when we're off for vacation. Um, but our students are eager and excited. We want to make sure that our students are hitting that goal of 30 questions or higher so that we continue um, to show growth. One of the other pieces that we are connecting with some of our IXL is through our amazing EL department um, when they're using Imagine Learning. Our students who are, are um, identified 
identified as ML or EL students, they're utilizing Imagine Learning as their tool, but also still stepping into their arena. Um, our Imagine Learning progress um, mirrors what we're seeing in our IXL data and connects consistently to what we're doing when we're exiting students from our EL department. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about the common assessments. And if you take a look there, this is um, third grade. If you look at the interim one, interim two, um, there is some gains. Um, it's important to look at interim one. Red goes down in interim two and yellow goes up, which is a positive thing. Um, when you first look at it, you might look like, Okay, that's still below basic, but are well below moved up. So that's what's making the below basic increase. Um, and then if we look at the fourth grade, same there, there's a big increase in our um, jump in below basic because in the well below basic, students moved up. So that's why there is a jump there. Okay, we're still at ELA, fifth grade and sixth grade. Um, many of the students, if we look at the um, fifth grade, they moved up above. If you look, there was growth in um, above benchmark. Um, we grew from well below basic, and we grew on benchmark in fifth grade. Sixth grade, we grew in the um, on benchmark. We also grew a little in above benchmark. We um, grew, sixth grade grew all the way through. Um, on the, they moved from well below to below basic. And in the um, seventh and eighth grade, we um, did the same. We noticed that students in sixth through eighth grade, there are some difficulties that they're having academically, and we are taking proactive measures to support them. We have Saturday school. We have over 100 students signed up. The first day and it rained, we had over 80 students attend. The next Saturday, we had 87 students attend. We have teachers who are using their lunch to um, support students after school, they are supporting students. So teachers are seeing that there is some growth that needs to happen and they're stepping in. Okay, and um, I'm gonna talk about math. Um, this year we started a new math program and the students are working real hard to overcome some of the challenges that are posed by this new math program that was implemented. Um, and we are filling in the gaps using IXL and other different programs that the um, district offers. So if you look there, we do know that we still have work to do and we are putting in the work. So if you look, that's grade two. Grade three, yeah, that's grade six. And then we have grade eight. All right. The next piece is related to our talent management. Um, I know over the past year, we've talked a lot about um, teacher attendance. Um, and I really want to take a minute and stand here because I did a lot of um, digging into the data because I didn't want to just put up a number in front of you and not be able to explain more about it. Um, so our teacher attendance is 94%, which is higher than our student attendance. Um, we do encourage our te teachers to take off if they're sick, they need time. We prioritize family and health. Um, so we do encourage that. Um, I only have, Ms. Smallwood and I only have two teachers that have below 90% attendance. 
We also have two teachers that have 100% attendance. Everyone else is in the, in the range of 92 or higher, um, which is huge because we see some, yeah, we are very, very proud of our staff. They do a wonderful job um, of making sure they show up every day. Even when we're not feeling 100%, they're still there. Um, the other piece that comes along with teacher attendance, um, when teachers are absent is subs. Um, we are very lucky to have four consistent building subs with us. Um, we have one that comes in two to three times a week. Um, our building subs are integral to how we do. They are part of our family. Um, the students know them and respect them. We do have subs that work with specific at grade levels. We have some that just stay in that K to four range, and we have subs that stay in the five to eight range. Um, our teachers do a wonderful job of making sure that if we don't have coverage, they split out and support. Um, I have some of my fifth and sixth grade teachers here. Because they are so aligned in the way they're teaching and the curriculum, students don't miss instruction when teachers are absent. They take the other students and say, all right, I'm teaching fifth grade math. The other fifth graders are coming with me for my math lesson because we're aligned. Mr. Yerger and Ms. Kohler do a really good job of making sure that they're aligned in, in, in fifth and sixth grade so that if that does happen, it's seamless for them. They don't interrupt instruction. So I do want to celebrate my teacher's attendance because I do think that that's a wonderful job. Um, we also um, have some teacher assessment participation rates. Um, we have some mix. We try to get above 90%. We do have moments where we see we dip a little bit. Um, our teachers did a survey to help us understand what exactly is happening. Um, and it's not that our teachers aren't giving the assessments. It's the scanning process. It's the student attendance. Um, it's sometimes the time. We're behind in a curriculum. We don't want to rush students to a test. We don't want to just give them a test for participation. Um, so our teachers do a really good job of making sure that they're advocating using their teacher voices to make sure that we're supporting our students. Um, and then we have um, a number of teachers. Um, we've done really great with our teachers staying. I, I, I do like to joke and say nobody ever leaves good unless they're retiring or moving, and that's definitely the case. Um, we have three new teachers this year, um, and we have a lot of supports in, in for them. We do mentoring. We, do, they, we give them opportunities to check in with their peers. Um, we check in with them as frequently as we can. We like to give them feedback. They're doing PLCs. Our leadership team is also supporting them. Um, Mr. Bailey, who's sitting here, he is one of our new teachers, although he's been in the district for a, a few days. Um, <laughs> he's done, you know, he's done a really good job of being a first year teacher and also supporting staff. Um, so we're really, really happy with the work that we're doing. We only have one technical listed vacancy um, right now. Our art position is vacant and it has been vacant for two years, um, but we do have a um, building sub that comes in every day. She plans for art. Um, our team also does a wonderful job of trying to support her through the things that you don't necessarily learn as a sub, classroom management, how to tailor instruction. Um, all of those pieces are also filled in those gaps by our teaching staff. We also have done a lot of professional development and leadership um, work through our building. Um, one of the things that my teachers always ask for, um, and I think we do a good job of honoring, um, is making sure that we give them that gift of time. Um, so whenever we can do it, we do it. We also are really trying to support our teachers into to taking on leadership roles within our building. Um, that is definitely something that is wonderful. Um, two of our teachers, Ms. Kohler and Ms. Gross, do a wonderful job. They're actually leading our Saturday schools. Uh, our Saturday school program, they did all the legwork. Ms. Smallwood and I just show up and open the building. They do everything for us, and that's such a great opportunity for them to be leaders within our building. Um, and some of the other things that we've done, um, we've really held true to our purpose as a building, making sure we're committing to that. Um, we have loved the work that we've done with equity, diversity, and inclusion and belonging. Um, I'm able to lead one of the sessions, and our staff has done a great job of showing up. Um, we do a lot of uh, 
um, a cadence progress monitoring. We connect to our 90 day plan. Um, we also give opportunities for our EL team. So we have two of our EL team members over here, Ms. Uh, Maria Wood and Ms. Tori Gross. They do some training too, because some of the best practices that they have within their classrooms for some of our smaller populations of students, um, are they're able to connect that. So we have lots of opportunities. Um, our teachers do a wonderful job of doing PLCs every week. Um, they run their own PLCs every week and they do a wonderful job. So I'm very grateful. Um, before we go to the last slide, I do want to take an opportunity and introduce our amazing team that's next to me. Um, first, I have Miss Tanisha Harrison. Um, she's our seventh and eighth grade ELA teacher. Um, next to her, I have Mr. Bailey. Mr. Bailey is um, one of our seventh and eighth grade emotionally gifted or ES teachers. We call him emotionally gifted at good. Uh, Mr. Bailey is Yes, you just stole my thunder. He was one of our grown own. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bailey is a first year teacher of our emotionally gifted program. He is one of our um, products of our grow our, uh, grow your own program. He also is supporting new teachers and um, our incoming next year new teachers um, and making sure that they're able to pass that praxis um, and become certified teachers. So he provides study materials. Um, he's working with one of our York High grads who we're hoping to join our team next year, um, just to make sure that he's supporting. Um, next to him, I have Miss Tori Gross, who is one of our amazing ELD specialists. Um, who also runs our Saturday school program. Um, next to her is Miss Amy Kohler, who is one of our five, six math and science teachers. Next to her is Miss Maria Wood, who is another one of our ELD specialists. <laughs> and last but definitely not least, my buddy over there, Mr. Chad Yerger, who is one of our fifth and sixth grade math and science teachers. I know that I would not be the leader that I am without the support of my amazing team, the person next to me, and those that are online, my friends that could not come today. Um, so, um, Jess, you can go to the last side. I just, again, want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity to be before you and talk about what we love, um, but also giving myself and Ms. Smallwood the opportunity to continue to lead good. Um, I feel like I am at home, so thank you very, very much, and we will take any questions that you may have at this time. I would like to... Sorry. I just want to, when I was talking about math, we are not doing bad in math, but if you look at the data, it shows we started out strong and that the students, it's a new curriculum. It's new for the students, it's new for the teachers. So not that they are doing bad, it's just that it's a new curriculum. So if you're questioning like, what's happening? First marking period, they was here, you know, so they're not doing bad. So if you look, we don't have, I think in one of the groups, as a matter of fact, let me get what grade, first grade doesn't have any students well below basic. So I'm gonna start there. So I don't wanna make it seem like math's doing bad because they really are not. But I just want to address what is happening over time. Okay. I do have a question. And yes, sir. I just wanna go back to when you were talking about the CDT mm -hmm. and you are saying, talking about that that's being a hard it's, it's hard to assess the indicators of whether or not our kids are going to do well mm -hmm. on the PSSA. Mm -hmm. So my next question is, what areas are the most challenging to assess in that CDT? It is the, um, hold on. I think I said it was the math. Oh, that was your it's question. the um, ELA. Okay. ELA. Math is on target. Science is on target. Also, when the, when we're looking at our CDT tested testing as a predictor for PSSA, um, our students need to still gain that content um, and the standards that are necessary. So our teachers do a really great job of unpacking that. We ultimately want to see growth. Um, we're seeing certain areas as predictors on the CDT of what we're seeing in PSSA, um, but are also our teachers do the work, the legwork to make sure that our students understand what the expectations are. So things like understanding that there's a rubric 
and Mr. Yerger does this in his classroom, the kids pull out the math rubric from the, the beginning of the year to make sure that they understand that there's tools. Um, so we need to continue to drill down. Um, we also do a lot of assessments. So making sure we're looking at multiple assessments and not just one. Well, and, you answered my second question. <laughs> and I would like to say in reading, they do better than what the CDT mm -hmm. indicates. So that's what I would like to say, that it, they do better. Board members, any other questions? No, I just wanted to say I was glad uh, Ms. Smallwood expounded on what was shown on here. I had a hard time looking at it. I was trying to look at it on my phone a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So I want you to think I was looking at something else. I was trying to follow that. <laughs> we'll make it a bigger, a little bit bigger next time. We just, it's, it's a little blurry to me on the Maybe it's just me, but I, I'm also glad you talked a little bit about um, the UVA training and the techniques you yes. use from that. So yeah, we glad, love it. glad to hear that. So, yeah. We there. love it. We actually are. Um, I'm so grateful to um, Dr. Barry, Dr. Gloucester and Dr. Miles. Um, they were able to sneak me back in. So we are a duo that goes together, um, which really makes a difference. Um, this last time we definitely pushed the work that we, um, we had to do. We like drilled in, dialed down. We could not see anybody else in that room when we got to work. Um, so I, I thank them for, for finding a way to put me back in and be able to be there with my partner. I just want to, I'm impressed with the teacher turnout. I mean, so far, I think we've seen the largest. Oh, good. We do like I to be mean, the. We we are a little competitive. Yeah, <laughs> we are a little competitive. And and the kids that that tells me that those teachers are dedicated. They so are. now we got to get those kids back out there because that's telling them that they have good teachers in that mm -hmm. school who are willing to show up every day for them. Thank you for thank you for recognizing yeah. that we are very That's blessed impressive. with our teachers. Yeah. Absolutely, There's and our power professional yeah. staff and our everybody shows up. Miss Smallwood and I really try not to be off, mm -hmm. um, you know. But the thing I think that we're in a space where um, we were both at UVA and we had two teacher leaders that were able to cover the building. Two yeah. teacher leaders who are yeah. working on their principal search leading yeah. that building. Um, and it was it's wonderful. So thank you for honoring our teachers. We're very, very proud yeah. of the work that they're doing and showing up every day. Um, they both, uh, Director Brown and Director Orr, mentioned two things that I really wanted to highlight, too, was um, it was really nice to hear some outcomes from UVA because we often don't. We hear that from, from the cabinet level, but we don't usually hear that from um, the building level. So it was really good to, to hear that as well as I want to echo the attendance um, for um, teachers. So my question, usually I have questions for um, the two of you standing there, but I don't, not for you today. My questions are for this group over here. For you guys. And um, I would just like to know, based upon what um, the leaders of your building have shared with us tonight and based upon your attendance, um, in this building, what is it that you feel that your leadership is doing right that you make every effort to be there, uh, some of you every day and most of you almost every day? So what is it dif what what is the difference between the leadership? Because it really that's what it's reflective of, at least in my opinion. Oh my God, I come up and talk. Oh. You have to come up here. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Maria Wood. Um, first and foremost, it's all the support that they give us. Whatever we need, we are ELD teachers and anything we need to support our students, Kelly and Smallwood absolutely give us everything we need. We wanted to do pilot the Imagine Learning program this year, and our school was not nominated to be one of the people to do it. And Kelly said, you know what, I'm going to use the funds from our school and we're going to do it and implement it. And it has shown huge growth mm -hmm. just in three months for our ELD mm -hmm. students in literacy and vocabulary that some of these students have gone up 800 points. Wow. So does wow. I have kindergartners reading books. Yes. It is amazing, yes. So anything we ever need, both of them have been there to support us. 
It's just a level like, of trust. And for example, we had, I'm Tori Gross. I'm an ELD specialist. There was a new kit that came up for our new our newcomers and beginners. We thought this would be wonderful. We sent Miss Kerner a text. What do you think about this? She's like, if you want it, you got it. I'm ordering it for you. Like she totally just trusts us and supports us and just trusts that we're going to do our job. And not just the ELD, it's every staff. If you need anything, she's right there and she gets it for you. If you have a problem with the student, she's there to help out, anything. So mm -hmm. that just helps us to be there. And so we show up to do for her that she does for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for, for that. Cause sometimes it's, it's not sometimes it's good to hear why some of the things are working that are, that, that are working. And sometimes and that's not to say that we haven't heard good things in any of the other presentations. Yeah. I think what, what you did, um, at least in my opinion was, was you gave it, gave us examples of how you are actually doing doing some of these things and what it looks like. And that takes us who may not be in your classroom every day. It helps us to better understand what is happening and what is working. And then it, it reflects the, the numbers that we are seeing here with, with the teacher attendance, which is huge. I mean, that's just a, a, a huge thing that, you know, um, we have to heck echo. And it probably is one of the highest ones that we've seen come before us um, mm -hmm. thus far. And so to have teachers on 100% attendance and um, everyone else, you know, largely 92 plus, plus percent is, is just really huge. And it, and it demonstrates what can happen when um, teachers show up. And it takes the focus off, you know, what are our kids aren't doing and talking more about what the big people in the room um are doing. So thank you for that. And we have the highest uh, exit rate. <laughs> well, thank, thank you for that. But I do, have, I do have one additional question. It had to do with when you spoke about your science, because that was one of the highest science scores that we've seen yes. come, up, come before us in a presentation. I'm very anxious to hear about how you are succeeding with science. Absolutely. Um, we do have the highest performing science teacher in the school district of the city of York in eighth grade. Um, we look at numbers. We're competitive by nature, right? Um, so it, he had uh, about 44% or so growth. Um, one of the things that um, he does a really good job with, and I'm, I'm speaking specifically to eighth grade because that's the grade that is is tested. Um, and our K to, K to seven teachers really lay the groundwork for science. Um, science and social studies are often overlooked. Um, but one of the pieces that we're seeing is there's a direct correlation between math and science. Um, so we're seeing that connection. Um, one of the things that Mr. Casal, who is our seventh and eighth grade science teacher, um, he also is our Alge one teacher. Um, he looks at student scores in fourth grade. So when his eight, when his eighth graders come into his classroom, he knows what they scored in fourth grade if they tested. And he knows what he has to do instructionally to get them there. It's the data dialogues. It's the data digs. Um, and he, he knows what his numbers are. He'll, um, he also does a great job of encouraging students to attend Saturday school, um, especially those kids that are in that bubble that may go above um, who who need a little bit of a push. Um, they do a lot of hands-on learning, learning and experiments. Um, they just did uh, strawberry DNA the other day, which was so awesome and amazing. Um, it's, it's building those relationships, but understanding the data, um, you know, we all have growth to do every single teacher, but our, you know, our, like the our K to seven really lay that, that foundation, that groundwork. Um, and he drills into that science content. So I'm very interested in seeing how we can share some of these best practices, because if we already have someone that's doing well with the population who's so transient, we have students going from school to school. So hopefully he would be able to share with his colleagues some of the things that he's doing in his classroom that's giving him success. And you talked about him also teaching math as well. Yes. Yeah, he is. Um, he is. It's a unique situation um, adding Alg 1 and not having teachers certified. So he was certified. So he teaches um, that extra section. Um, and the thing about I have to be grateful about Alg 1 and the district's push for it um, is that our eighth grade students are ready. Um, our seventh graders are talking about getting into that classroom. It's like the it class to be in. Um, we keep the class size just a 
little bit smaller. So there's a few less students um, in those classrooms, which makes the other class larger. Um, but the students want to be in that classroom. So it's definitely beneficial. But we would love to share some of the great work that he's doing and some of the other teachers are doing within our well, I'm glad to see that push again, because historically, Algebra 1 was taught in our middle schools. Absolutely. And students had that before they went to high school. So they were leaving high school, some going into geometry, some mm -hmm. going the other higher level of math. So it's good to see that that push is coming back. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're really excited. Thank you. Just one last question, though. Yes, ma'am. Parent participation. Mm -hmm. Your parents, are they coming out doing what they need they, to do? It's, it's interesting. Um, our parents show up. Um, they show up when we need them. They show up when they don't. Uh, when we don't need them, they're still there. Um, <laughs> you, you, uh, right? Yeah, um, I think one of the things that, that uh, our, I can say about our parents is that if we call them, they definitely come. Um, we do have events where our parents come. Um, but the other thing that I think our staff, and, and we do a good job, and I, I'm not trying to toot our own horn, but we are accessible for our families. So if you need something, you're calling or texting. Um, you know, we make ourselves successful. So they're coming. Uh, we also do send them over to the parent center. We have parents that are interested in English classes or going back to school. Um, we send job information to parents all the time. Yeah. You know, um, if you want to be a crossing guard, here's that information. Um, our parents are eager to learn, um, but uh, we also do have parents that just do pop ups and show up. So we try to keep an open door um, while still being like in control. So um, we have some come. I know uh, Mr. Bailey did a really great event this year. Um, partnering with McKinley uh, for emotionally gifted families. So it was just for our emotionally gifted families. Our students did Legos and walking tacos. Um, and the families really liked it because we were working on changing the narrative of what we're talking about our students. We're saying they're emotionally gifted. Um, our gifted is a great word to use um, and it's using language of success. So um, we love our families, they do. Yeah. Um, but we try, we try to get them in as many, as often as we can. That's good to hear because we definitely need their partnership. Yes. And these kids wouldn't be where we, they are. With we also do Saturday Saturday um, yeah. play and learns for our families too. So those babies. So as soon as we see a parent with a little belly, we're like, hey, we run parenting classes. Um, so our pre-K teachers um, are running those. So we have those currently going on right now connected with Saturday school. Yeah. Um, just trying to get them in early. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing is some of our parents that we have, I joke about being 24. So let me be 24 for a minute. Um, but some of our kids... Um, some of the students that I've experienced are now coming back with their children mm -hmm. um, and now their children are ours and they're coming and we're like, all right, let's work together. Cause I remember how you were in class, but let's work with you um, and let's come yeah. in. So yeah. it's great. Yeah. yeah. Great. Oh yes. And we have PSSA parent night tomorrow for our families, okay. helping them prepare their students, get ready. Um, so it's just giving opportunities for our kids and our families. Okay. Great. The last thing that I just wanted to honor was um, that I'll say thank you for is is sharing the use of the tools. We 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 get a lot of things that come in front of us, and um, we may or may not know the use of those things. So I thank you for expressing and sharing the the use of the tools and resources that we are often approving and and telling us about how they are utilized in your in your process. So that's another. Um, kudos that sometimes is not often um, really shared. So thank you for telling us, you, you know, when um, Ms. Smallwood would talk about the data and she would share what are the, what tool or resources being used to support and, and or aid that. So we know um, that the things that we are um, reading and evaluating, uh, uh, approving and questioning, um, looking at outcomes, it's important to be able to hear um, what is actually going on. So I thank you both for that. I don't have Thank any more you. questions, board members, any other questions? And just the openness with recognizing where you are and what you got, to, what you have to do. And I don't believe that anyone here is expecting our educators to be perfect, but we want them to be honest and genuine about what their challenges are. And that way, knowing how the board can support the administration when they're delivering services to the individual respective schools. Thank you. Dr. Barry, anything else? All right. Thank, Thank you. you.
All right, Dr. Barry, did you have anything else? I do. I have a report. A very brief one, but a report nonetheless. <laughs> so this month's report. Um, good night. I don't genuinely do a report at the board meeting, but because I used the committee meeting for the data, that's why I have a report today. So this isn't going to be a habit. I just wanted you to don't want you to think I'm <laughs> being extra, even though I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> Okay, so our COVID numbers um, for from September to March, we've certainly come a long way. We're, yeah. we're, we're trying to get to the point in which we can stay in single digits and, and eventually see some zeros. I don't think we've seen, seen a zero since 2021. 20, I, don't, I don't think we've seen one yet. So, But, um, you know, we, we continue. But there's all types of other things that are that are that are roaming around. Um, RSV is rampant. There's measles lurking around. So we just have to be careful and keep taking care of one another. Lots of updates, some of which are, are, are familiar. Just reminders, the next faith-based meeting, March 25th, um, and that is here. The next advisory meeting, Wednesday, May 8th. That's virtual, of course. Um, summer school planning has started and is progressing nicely. Dr. Miles has had um, several updates um, for all of the different programs that we are utilizing um, that we'll be doing for summer school, and, and, and it's shaping up nicely. Um, the district has submitted um, an application, well, applications for 21st century renewal applications um, for Davis, Devers, Ferguson, Good, McKinley, and Jackson. So those are the schools that already had 21st century. When we received that grant, believe it or not, that grant is up now. So that was an $800,000 grant. So we're crossing our fingers for a renewal. But the, but the rules have changed a lot. One of the biggest rules, which I'm not sure how it works, is anyone that was in this cohort as a student can't be in the next cohort. So that's a big difference. So we have to find a new cohort of kids, essentially. Yeah, it's a very different process. So I don't know that that will eventually get challenged um, because if students need an after school program, they need an after school program. So no matter who they are, or whether they were there last year or not. If it's a resource, we want to be able to provide it. So we'll see. I have a feeling it'll be challenged, but you know, those are the rules for now. The date for the four chaplain breakfast is out. It's May 8th at 9.15. I'm sorry? The four chaplains breakfast, it's a different time. It never began this late. But last year they did it in two different parts. They had a presentation, had a presentation oh, yeah. prior. And it was it was some kind of big anniversary. So yeah. so and then they had a gala. Remember they had a yeah. gala. So is this yeah. what they're doing again? No, they're not doing a gala this year. It's oh, just they just changed the time that they're starting. I think well, the breakfasts were always something like seven or eight o'clock, seven or eight o'clock. They were no. never this late. I, that, that's what they sent. I mean, it's week. fine with me. Yeah. Nine fifteen. We'll we'll check to make sure, but they sent yeah, it to us. Yeah, <laughs> it was never this late. So, I well, don't know. Maybe they're starting later. No, you know. they were never this late. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the Y Cal dinner, directors' dinner, is scheduled for April third, Wednesday, April third, and then the JR OTC Bearcat Battalion annual cadet ball is Friday, April twelfth at seven o'clock. So lots going on. Mm -hmm. Pathways for graduation report. We keep seeing those numbers growing up to 75%. That's wonderful. Yeah. So we want to, that's what we want to see. So definitely starting earlier has been beneficial. your absences um, from February 1st um, of last year to February 1st down to the 29th of this year. 
huge jumps. Huge jumps. And our enrollment, our, our monthly enrollment report. McKinley keeps jumping up. Yeah. McKinley is a school that's jumped up. That's oh, wow. the only that's one that's yeah. continuing to wow. jump right now. Uh -huh. So in December, they were at 591, and now they're at 619. So those are some huge jumps. Uh -huh. But it, it, it's historically, McKinley has historically had pockets and has jumped in the spring like that. Mm -hmm. That's not new. Oh, we see, notice that the high school went down a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, is there a reason the kids, they just took off or? I have no idea. Uh, I just, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Huh. Some of them may be. Number 75 mm -hmm. kids or so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yep. Okay. Off the top of my head, no, but I, I, we do have that information. We can get it for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, we have three more faith-based meetings left: March twenty-fifth, April twenty-second, and May twentieth. Now that April twenty-second date. Wow, April 22nd. So you gonna have those pastors do whatever they want to do with me? <laughs> well, that's that that's that day. Wow. Mm -hmm. We'll have to keep that in mind, Miss March. <laughs> A lot of them that come to that faith space because I'm always here with them. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay, looking ahead, our March early dismissal is on the 27th, and we have our holiday break from the 29th of March to the 1st of April. So, any questions? Wow. Okay. That concludes my report. Yeah. All right. Uh, next up on the agenda, uh, any public comment? Um, no. No? no. Okay. Thank you. Um, on to uh, an items of initial concern, which we have none. And next up, our committee reports, uh, buildings and grounds, and Director Orr is filling in for. Um, Director Liggins. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Hain, is there anything you need to add to this? So, uh, okay. Identified future projects, finished projects. Okay. Monthly reports, all that. We did receive all that information at uh, committee reports. So, you said there's nothing else to add? Okay. Well, in the absence of the chairperson, that completes the report. Thank you, Director Orr. <clears throat> Next up, board members, are our personnel agenda. So that's 7BA, 7BB, 7BC. 7BD, 7BE, 7BF, and 7BG. And then on to our consent agenda. Uh, any questions for any items or anything that needs to be pulled, board members? on the consent agenda. Take a minute and walk through, please. So I do need to pull um, in a, a couple of items. Well, not pull, but one item is on the HR, page three of the HR agenda. We have a school police officer who 
resigned and has rescinded their resignation to take a different position. So um, it is Daniel Ware on page th on page three. Okay. Third from the bottom. He um, was a school police officer and um, due to some family obligations is going to um, move positions. So he had initially resigned his position as school police. He rescinded that resignation and it's just going to transfer and, and going to voluntarily transfer into a different position of hall monitor. So so he's still going to stay with the district. He's very good with the kids and um, we're happy to be able to keep him. So. Okay. And the other item, page nine is the um, number eight letter Q. It is the calendar. We are pulling it off because we had to make some um, additional corrections. And so we will put it back on for next month because it was already posted. So we couldn't, you know, approve it with it being different than what was posted. So we're pulling it off just to put it back one next month. And it has a few um, changes that, that we'll highlight. That is, that is the count. Yes. Okay. Everybody has a so that shows the information that we're pulling it for. So. Okay. Directors, any other items? All right, hearing none, do we have a motion to accept our consent agenda as, um, as is with the uh, 8Q being pulled? Oh, okay. so oh, Madam President, I'll make the motion that we accept all, except for the one being pulled. Second. Yeah. Motion to um, first and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. On to a uh, report from our chief recovery officer, Dr. Duke. Good evening. Uh, just two quick announcements. Uh, we do have a new liaison with the Department of Education, a new special advisor uh, was appointed to the secretary in a temporary basis. And she's been uh, working with us for the last couple of years anyway, but her name is Miss Gina Colarasi. So she'll be dealing with us as far as recovery, monitoring and everything. And our first meeting with her is this Friday at 1030 with the uh, uh, school district team. So other than that, that's all I have to report. All right, thank you, Dr. Thu. <clears throat> Next up are board representative reports. And first is Lincoln Intermediate Unit um, with Director Wiggins, who is not here tonight. She did send a report, but another report. Yes. Um, in Director Wiggins absence, we'll just highlight the report that she previously shared um, with all board members and taking a quick glance. Just one thing that, that I see to highlight is, is that um, the um, LIU board approved the retirement of Dr. Jerry West to, to be effective January 3rd. So they will be looking for a new um, director for LIU 12. Any questions about the LIU report? That will conclude that report. Next up is PSBA with myself. And there is no new report for that because the new budget has not been approved. So I anticipate that we probably for Hopefully, I'm just going to say it this way. Next month, we hope to have a report, which would mean that we've had an approved budget. I'm not going to cross my fingers, but we shall see. So that will conclude that report. Your County School of Technology, Director Robert Brown. Thank you, Madam President. Um, besides the uh, information that was submitted uh, a couple of weeks ago from the um, last meeting, just today, um, there was a follow-up to the cyber attack that the um, York County School of Technology experienced last April. 
So uh, they're in the process of their cyber insurance company sending out additional letters and um, uh, information regarding the next steps that those students and faculty need to take. So that completes the additional report. Thank you. Thank you, Director Glover Brown. Next up is uh, York Adams Tax Bureau, Mr. Hain. Uh, yes, thank you, um, President Kennedy. And there were no meetings held in February, so there is no report for this month. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hain. Um, Dallas for Scholars, Director Thompson. So thank you. Um, this I kind of this is actually my first meeting I actually attended, and it was actually very uh, inf informal. Being a recipient recipient of uh, the Dallas for Scholars program, it's really cool to see what's going on behind the scenes. So mm -hmm. um, one thing I would definitely want to uh, just kind of make sure that everybody is aware of, I believe that the applications for the Dallas for Scholars um, scholarship program has closed. Um, so from what I'm seeing from the notes, uh, we did have 40 applicants who met the uh, uh, certain scholarships they haven't within the program, and they're going to be starting their student interviews on April April eighth. So um, I know they're excited to talk to the students about uh, this opportunity. So uh, if we hear more about how they go, I'll definitely be willing to share that next time. But that's pretty much all I have at the moment. Thank you. Thank you, Director Thompson. And the next two, uh, the LIU Authority and the York County School Technology Authority, are not monthly meetings. So um, Mr. Breland, I don't think there's a report for for that because uh, there's not a monthly meeting for that for either one of those. Um, so we are good with that. Any other public comment? I would just add a um, a kudos um, to um, Miss Alana Barnes from our high school and uh, Chief Quinn Johnson for participating in um, this past Friday. Uh, the YWCA's Racial Justice Committee held um, a countywide um, Black Summit to take a look uh, specifically at education, civic engagement, financial literacy, mental health, and this one I always forget. There's another. There's another one, but um, Alana Barnes participated on a panel. Each one of those topics had a specific panel, and um, Alana Barnes participated on a panel, and so did. Um, uh, Chief Quinn, and so we just want to thank them representing um, the school district um, in the countywide conversation. And even though it is a countywide conversation, it largely comes back to the city. And so um, to be able to have representation there was, was really nice. And it was a really nice size um, group of the county as well. So we just wanted to recognize them for their participation. Any other comments? I have one. I'd like to give some kudos to our director, Glover Brown, who was honored at uh, Christmas Addicts annual meeting oh, last Sunday. I, I like she was honored for her the benefits coming from Columbia Gas. She was also honored for her years with Columbia Gas and also for the first Black female to of her department. Oh, first Black female for her department. Well, that's wonderful news. You love to keep secrets. So it, it <laughs> really works. <good. laughs> it wasn't a secret. To... Her daughter planted it all on Facebook. I must have missed it then because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see it, but Her congratulations. Post -post -post it. I have something. But she ain't going to say anything about it. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Our superintendent is going to be honored and recognized at the Black Excellence Awards Gala in Lancaster. Yes, she is. <laughs> <laughs> on April 25th, 2024. So if anybody wants the information, I have it. It is yeah. in Lancaster. It was a show, a show that the, um, the district and, and, and the board are doing the work in the community and we are workers who put our head down and, and, and do the work and um, don't always um, uh, seek the, the recognition, but it's nice to be um, seen sometimes for, for the work that's being done. Um, and um, Diane, for the years that you've spent um, at Columbia Gas, which mm -hmm. um, it's been a long time, I don't know how many years, but I know it's something that um, particularly in the younger generation isn't really seen anymore. 
So we really want to honor um, your time there and the commitment of Columbia Gas to the district and the way that the support and benefits come from um, Columbia Gas. So we thank you. And I believe that's the only position. Isn't that the only position you've had since coming out of school? The only job? Yeah. Third. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But the longest. 37 years. <laughs> yeah. 30, so, wow. Uh -huh. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment? Hearing none, we have our um, salary distribution list that we received as well. And uh, I will entertain a motion for, are we having an executive? I'll move. We don't have, we don't, we don't. So move, and you got a second? A second. All right. <laughs> so we're not doing executive session? No, because she's not here.